In the criminal justice system, bioterrorist offenses are considered especially heinous. At U of R, the dedicated scientists who investigate these vicious infections are members of an elite squad known as the CDC. These are their stories. Viruses. We all get them now and again. But for the most part, our bodies have resistance and can fight against these pathogens. What would happen if we were faced with an outbreak of an unfamiliar virus, silently attacking our world as we know it? It could happen today. It could happen to you. Today, viruses can be manufactured and combined together to create super viruses that mankind has little chance of combating. These viruses are made through recombinant RNA. In other words, specific gene coding for certain aspects of diseases can be added to strand of RNA, much like a link on a bracelet. With a potent combination of genes, this virus could easily wipe out a majority of the world population without the proper precautions. The brainpox virus is one of these viruses. One part influenza, one part smallpox, and one part NPV. This virus is the most deadly the world has ever seen, and the students at the University of Richmond could never have prepared for such an outbreak or foreseen the damage that it would cause. This virus is man-made and can be encased in crystals so that it is very hard to destroy. When the crystals break, the virus is released into the airstream in a fine, dust-like mist, completely undetected by bystanders. This feisty virus can easily make its way into the respiratory system, where the infection begins. Victim number one does not notice inhaling this particle while enjoying some quality pre-bikini season elliptical time. By this time, victim one has spread the disease to several others through direct contact. During the incubation period, the victim does not suspect any difference in their health until the onset of a mild cold. Once the cold begins, the infection worsens extremely rapidly. The first sign of infection is a clear liquid excretion from the nose and a red gold ring around the pupils. At this point, the victim is fully infected and their existence on this earth is limited. The brain pox virus begins as a respiratory infection, but quickly spreads to the nervous system, where the virus does its stealthiest work. The virus particles take over the nervous system, multiplying themselves using the host cells. The part of the brain that receives the most damage is the midbrain. This part of the brain is responsible for primitive actions, such as breathing and chewing. When the virus destroys the midbrain, the victim often loses their own personality and takes on a more animalistic character, chewing up their lips and partaking in self-cannibalism. Without any notice or understanding of the virus and its infection process, the victim has little time to fight back, which is why the period between infection and death is so short. While the toxic virus particles literally melt the brain, the victim loses control of their body, collapsing into a violent set of seizures. Because the virus is opportunistic, it preys on its victims long after the original host is dead. If a person comes in contact at all with an infected body, it is almost guaranteed that that person will also become infected. Call the FBI. Call the Department of Homeland Security. Call the White House. It looks like we have a possible bioterrorist on the loose. Is U of R doomed? Stay tuned for next week's episode to find out what happens.